Thank you for coming today on behalf of your city. Thank you. And happy Russell Westbrook Day. How about that? You have filled the room, and for the 14th and final time, I will be giving the State of the City Address. As many of you know, this is an annual Chamber of Commerce event, which gives me the chance to thank them for this incredible relationship they've had with the city, and especially over these last 14 years. We have worked on the front lines on so many different tasks, I'm trying to increase the number of jobs, trying to diversify the economy, uh, fighting for a, a pro-business environment that could help us attract and grow businesses. Um, what I would like is for everyone who's on the Chamber's Board of Directors or on the staff of the Chamber, would you please stand so we can show our appreciation to all the Chamber does? Please stand right now. Let's show our appreciation. Thank you. Roy and Rhonda and everybody standing, thank you very much. And over at City Hall, I am fortunate to work with a great City Council and several members of the City Council are here today. If they would stand and remain standing as I call their name, in all, there are eight individuals who give generously of their time and expertise. James Greiner, representing Ward 1, Ed Shadid, Ward 2, Larry McAtee, Ward 3, Todd Stone is in Ward 4, David Greenwell is from Ward 5, Meg Salyer, representing Ward 6, John Pettis is Ward 7, and Mark Stonecipher is Ward 8. Now, remain standing. I'd like the rest of the people I work with at City Hall, with Jim Couch and the rest of our city employees that are here today, would you please stand along with the council? Hold on, hold on just a second. And now, would anyone who serves on a city commission or an advisory board or an oversight board or one of our trusts, would you please stand? And then the rest of us can show our appreciation by applauding our council, our city staff, our, our community volunteers with one big round of applause. Down front over here to the left, I want to recognize my family. Terry is here along with the, my three boys and uh, my three daughters-in-law. They're all here. And I, I must say, of all the thank yous that are going to come out of my mouth over the last two or three months, none are more sincere than for you all. Thank you. And uh, my grandchildren, three of them are here. As uh, Rhonda mentioned, seventh generation Oklahomans. Let's first meet L Lace, uh, Lily and Macy. Would you two please stand and wave? Yeah. And, um, and I want you to meet five-year-old Fern. She's making her State of the City Address debut today. Stand up, Fern, where everybody can see you. It's a big room, Fern. Please um, thank you for helping me recognize them and for all their support. They're, those girls are growing up in a great city, and thank you to everyone here for helping to create it for them. No city in the country has come as far as this one. And um, if you find yourself looking around the room today and saying to yourself, who are all these people? It is not your imagination. We have a lot of people moving into the city. We have a lot of young people that go off to college and then they move back and they're bringing their friends. Now, I'll, I'll take you back. In the 2000 census, we had about 500,000 people inside the city limits. Today, we're at about 650,000. And the metro area is also reaching a new milestone. Kind of depends on how you define the metro area, but we're now at about 1.5 million people. And while we're gaining people, we're also raising the standards. We're raising the expectations of what we expect of ourselves. You know, I remember soon after I was elected in, in 2004, I was invited back to the very grade school that I had attended, Coronado Elementary, over at 58th and Portland. Now, at the time, we were just finishing the MAPS projects. That final project was the downtown library, and we gathered around. We held a sub celebration complete with balloons. Park Avenue has never seen such a, such a wild time. It was a big deal. I mean, finishing MAPS was a big deal. Anyway. A few days later, I'm back in my grade school, and a fourth grader walks up to me, and she says, Mayor Cornette, 
I saw you on television the other day and there were balloons released and everyone was cheering. And I immediately knew that she was talking about the MAP celebration. Well, she's just nine years old, so I took the time to explain to her that we had just finished this, this very long initiative. We built a new sports arena and a new ballpark and we built a canal in Bricktown and we improved the fairgrounds and we worked on the Civic Center and the Convention Center and we're building a better city for you and your friends to grow up in. And she politely had waited till I finished and then she said, Mayor Cornette, were those balloons biodegradable? <laughs> she had high standards and and really, higher standards is the best way to describe the ascension of Oklahoma City. It's higher standards for public buildings and sports venues. You see all of that in maps and maps for kids and maps three. We have higher standards for public safety, which you see with our commitment to hire additional police officers and firefighters. We have a new police station online. We have new fire stations coming. Next month, we'll complete the process and have body cameras for every police officer in the field. Major improvements at the fairgrounds are recently new. They're driving economic development impact and improving our experience at the Great State Fair of Oklahoma. We have better parks, better programming, more things to do when you get to the parks. They're places that you want to spend the day. And of course, we have better streets. They're built around the needs of people, not necessarily the needs of cars. This transformation started with Project 180, but it continues today with the new boulevard. And then the largest street resurfacing project in the nation built over the next two years. Sidewalks, hundreds of miles of sidewalks that are connecting neighborhoods with schools, neighborhoods with shopping, neighborhoods with restaurants. We're building biking and jogging trails. Funding now in place to exceed 100 miles of trails in our comprehensive system. The newest will be the Will Rogers Trail. It's going to connect the Oklahoma River with Lake Hefner. And then next, the third MAPS 3 trail will start in southeast Oklahoma City and it will encircle Lake Draper. Of course, you're well aware about the senior health and wellness centers that really is our generation's recognition that the baby boomers are gonna be around a long, long time. We need them to be healthier than any generation before. The first center opened up Northwest. It is a huge success. The next will open up in April in Capitol Hill. And of course, we've made more improvements on the river. It has become the home of the best canoe kayaking and rowing in the world. We have a nationally recognized transit system with newer buses cleaner buses, a third of our buses now run on CNG, and the system is reaching more people than ever before. Last year, the Oklahoma City Zoo had the busiest year ever, more than one million visitors, and we broke ground on the new Sanctuary Asia exhibit, a seven-acre expansion that will be home to Asian elephants, uh, Indian rhinos, red pandas, uh, Komodo dragons, and more. Now, it doesn't open till July, but I got them to let us have the video that they're gonna show to introduce it to the rest of the world. So it's making its debut right now. coming to the zoo, Sanctuary Asia. Now there's a picture there of our new court building. You know, our court system is becoming a statewide model in reducing incarceration. A person shouldn't be in jail just because they're poor. 
our numbers are down 30 percent. Uh, it's providing real relief in an area where we need help. Our animal welfare department, working along with the private sector, has become a national model. And of course, it's at City Hall, we're all about urban planning. Uh, with unprecedented citizen involvement, we have a fairly new, modern, comprehensive plan that's going to allow us to better plan, prepare for the even faster changes that are heading our way. And all in all, I think everyone appreciates the process and is glad that we've got that plan under our belt. All right, let's, uh, let's focus for a second on 2017. Let's see, what else happened last year? Let's, oh, yeah, there was an eclipse. I think I had a sore neck for like two days. And one of our millennials had a really good year. <laughs> Russell Westbrook named the most valuable player in the National Basketball Association. How about that? <laughs> and that, along with a few million dollars, inspired a couple of other millennials to move here. Squad goals. <laughs> and before you know it, they're all smiling. We also had a lot of, of ground breakings and ribbon cuttings in the year, and two of them in particular are going to reshape the way that we look and think about Oklahoma City. And of course, the streetcar project had its groundbreaking and is now under construction. Uh, that's not much of a secret because it's created quite a bit of havoc for you, perhaps on your way down here today. But the cars will be arriving next month. The maintenance facility also just about completed, and the entire system should be running in less than a year. And as you know, we began work on the MAPS 3 Park this was one of the first projects I got to work on in the summer of 2004 as we began to plan for the relocation of I-40 and the opportunities that would be created because of that relocation. Now at the groundbreaking, we announced the name of the park and that's not an easy name to spell. And it, it took the kids a little while to get in the proper order. But Scissor Tail Park is the, the name of the park and eventually we got it all handled. All right, let's talk about jobs. Now, uh, since I first got elected, we've added about 100,000 new jobs and about 150,000 people, which I guess means we got about 50,000 people that are just kind of hanging out somewhere. <laughs> but the good news is they have some place to go. I mean, there's a lot to do around here. We've seen an explosion in new housing and new hotels, and many of our neighborhoods have been revitalized. Uh, let's take a look at a few before and after pictures, see if you can recognize some of these places. This is the Plaza District before, and this is it today. Remember what Midtown looked like a few years ago. There you go, and today. Up north, more of Midtown. Uh, Chisholm Creek, more of Midtown. Okay, that, that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, uh, 23rd Street, Uptown. And there's Chisholm Creek before and after. Amazing development. Okay, one more. East Bricktown before and now. And thanks to Gary Brooks, the first national building, the most impressive skyscraper to rise in Oklahoma City in the 1930s is undergoing an amazing transformation in the heart of our central business district. It's an enormously important project and I know we all can't wait till the First National comes online. Uh, the Skydance Bridge has forever changed a visitor's impact on Oklahoma City. Uh, the millions of people that pass on I-40 love seeing the Skydance Bridge and the different lights that illuminate the sky. And the Land Run sculptures keep getting better and better. The final few pieces are just around the corner. My thanks to artist Paul Moore for creating such an unforgettable place. And we could go on and on about how Oklahoma City has changed, but the truth is, as we know it, not every neighborhood is better, not every adult, not every kid is better off. And we can talk in big picture perspectives about how far the cities come, and we can nod our collective heads and collective amazement about all of the good things that have occurred. But it is a common urban story that no matter how much economic success a community enjoys, no city ever becomes problem free. No city is ever totally successful at addressing that intersection between poverty and homelessness and mental illness. And it doesn't mean we haven't tried, and it certainly doesn't mean we don't give up. And I want to highlight some of the philanthropic efforts that have been made to address our social needs because they've been extraordinary. 
We have so many faith-based organizations creating efforts to help improve lives. And, you know, it's counterintuitive, but I've seen it in cities across the nation. The more a local economy succeeds, the more its social needs increase. And in this community, we have so many efforts that I want to draw attention to just a few. First of all, uh, the Family Justice Center, known as Palomar, is working on domestic violence. The Homeless Alliance is working to end long-term homelessness in Oklahoma City. And Heartline is working on suicide prevention, um, helping on others that are facing an immediate crisis. And there's so many more. Let me, uh, let me see what we can come up with here. There's Catholic Charities, Curbside Chronicle, A Chance to Change, The Red Cross, the YWCA and the YMCA, Infant Crisis Center, the Salvation Army, Big Brothers Big Sisters, Boys and Girls Club, Dale Rogers Training Center, New View Oklahoma, Goodwill, North Care, the LCDA, Positive Tomorrows, Remerge, Sunbeam Family Services, Team, Upward Transitions, Urban League, Variety Care, First Tee, First Serve, and of course, the United Way. And I know many people in this room are involved in one of those agencies, giving of your time, giving of your resources. How about a collective round of applause for all of those that are doing so much. As for education, across our 24 school districts, you see a wide range of strategies and a wide range of outcomes. You see a wide range of student engagement, but overall, when you look at it and step back, it's the inconsistency that I think is the biggest problem we face. We have some of the top performing high schools in the country, and we have some of the lowest performing schools in the state. We have it all in the same community. One thing is clear, though. We concentrate a lot on education, and we should, because for a kid, a good school can mean a great life. Success is about inspiration and motivation with a real-world curriculum that is intellectually challenging. We need parental involvement. We need genuine accountability. But we know that education is a shared responsibility. There's a role for all levels of government. There's a role for the business community. We have to produce graduates with problem-solving, critical thinking skills who are prepared for college and career and real life. And to get there, we're going to need a higher level of thinking. We've also got to understand that a person's education should not end when they're in their 20s. The world is changing too fast. Part of the answer is about more people tapping into our career tech and our higher ed system. Overall, it's about raising the standards. It's about changing the culture and addressing the inefficiencies and understanding that for too many kids, the current system is not working. And our current level of thinking is not going to get us there. As Soon as possible, we need to get our teachers up to the regional average. STEM teachers need to be paid more. But more than ever, it's important in today's society, you've got to have education excellence everywhere. And this should be one of the leaders. All right, now let's talk about jobs, and particularly this community's ability to create jobs. There's my two youngest granddaughters, Fern and Penny. They were over at the donut shop, apparently got hired while they were in line, but you can never start too young. Thank you, girls, that Cornette work ethic on display. Our unemployment rate down to 3.3%. And you might think job creators are having trouble filling positions here, but for the most part, it appears people are moving into the city as fast as jobs are being created. There's a lot of isolated issues with training and getting people to the right skills. We do have an issue with some people being underemployed, but jobs are being created very quickly. And it seems like it's less and less of an issue. Uh, the city has done a really good job of diversifying its workforce. We are still known for energy jobs and corporate headquarters in the energy industry, but energy is now down to 3% of our workforce. Much of our growth, much of that success is in aviation. Uh, Tinker has just added 200 more scientists and engineers, and the tech industry is taking off right before our eyes. Uh, Starspace 46 is a tech incubator located near Film Row, 
It has nurtured startups and watched small businesses take off. They announced last week that they're doubling their space. And the tech growth is, of course, not limited to startups. Um, Paycom, Spears, New Technologies, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, I could go on and on. Tinker now has 1,500 tech professionals on campus, and they're going to hire 200 more this year. I've been mayor for 14 years, and I've been saying it for 14 years. IT skills are in very high demand, and so are a lot of other technical degrees and, and skills. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about how are we doing? How are we comparing? And uh, Wallet Hub recently made a list of the top 10 large cities in the United States to start a business. So if you're from any of these places, feel free to applaud for your hometown. Number 10, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay, I didn't hear anybody. Amarillo, Texas, number nine. All right, Austin, Texas, number eight. St. Louis, number seven. Durham, North Carolina is number six. Grand Rapids, Michigan, number five. Tulsa, Oklahoma, number four. There's a few splatterings of applause. Charlotte, North Carolina, number three. Salt Lake City, number two. I wonder, what would the number one large city in the U.S. to start a business be? It's Oklahoma City. All right. That's a good list. I want to spend a couple of minutes discussing the arts in our community because the arts affect all of us in so many ways. And the power of the arts is currently on display at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. If you've not been in the last few months, you need to go. Two powerful exhibits right now. Master Strokes, featuring the Dutch and Flemish drawings from the Golden Age, and the Art of Oklahoma, featuring art that's by or about our state. And of course, art crosses over our efforts into education and enlightenment. And it was a big year for allied arts. There was a national competition that was styled after the NCAA basketball tournament. It was called Brackets for Good. And 64 nonprofits across the country entered, and allied arts won it all. And they brought home a big check, and it helped them reach their yearly fundraising goal of $3 million. Their 2018 campaign kicks off tonight, and I'm sure you're going to hear some more about opportunities to help. There's volunteers in the arts, of course, uh, opening night, uh, the arts festival, uh, the memorial marathon. Thank you to all those who volunteer to make those arts events possible. Um, we've seen a lot of success. We've seen a lot of efforts to create jobs and growing the economy, diversifying the economy. All of those efforts are paying off. One thing I want to concentrate on in our effort at City Hall is we've never been in a better position to fund our priorities in public safety. 1,100 police officers. Within the next few weeks, every single officer on the streets is going to be wearing a body camera. Uh, we've added even more fire stations and firefighters to address our city's needs. They're getting the tools they need. Um, the first responders are well supported by the taxpayers. And in public works, as I mentioned earlier, we're embarking on what I believe is the largest street resurfacing project in the United States. We're also more involved in the health of our community than we ever have been before. Uh, the physical improvements to the built environment, the sidewalks, the jogging and biking paths, the senior wellness centers, all of that changing the level of health and wellness in our community. The Oklahoma City County Board of Health recently completed a community-wide assessment on our community's health and of course, we still have a long way to go, but they measured 15 different categories on health. And we were improving in 13 of the 15, including heart disease and strokes and infant mortality and a lot of other really important indicators. All of that is really good news. We need to continue to make health a priority in our city and our state. And yeah, please applaud to that one. If you think the last five years have been remarkable, just hang on. The next five years are going to be even more dramatic. Keep in mind, we currently have the three largest MAPS-3 projects, the streetcar, the park, and the convention center coming online. Omni Hotels of Dallas is investing $150 million. ODOT's finishing the boulevard. 
All combined, that's over a half a billion dollars that are being invested in your city. And of course, we never quit planning. We are in the early stages of upgrading our Route 66 corridor. And to do that, we're inviting the, the cities of Bethany and Yukon and War Acres and as well as the Chickasaw Nation to join us in an effort to make that a more memorable corridor. Um, I still have a couple of months on the job to go, still working on a few projects, but for many of us, it's probably going to be the last time I have a chance to thank you in person. So thank you for coming to this event today, and if you've come in previous years, thank you for those uh, attendance as well. Your support means a lot. I have come to learn that the people that come to the State of the City Address are turning into our best ambassadors because when I travel around, I hear so many nice things said about us, and people will quote something that I remember that I said at a State of the City address, and I'll remember that our ambassadors are out there talking about the city, talking about all the good things. That positive energy is very, very important to our, our statewide image, so please keep it up. Um, I have been fortunate to build a special relationship over these years with the chamber. Uh, when I was first elected, I guess the chair was Fred Hall, uh, then Larry Nichols, David Thompson, Carl Edwards, uh, Pete Delaney, uh, David Rainbolt, and now Rhonda Hooper. And obviously this community could not have accomplished nearly as much without each of you. And I want to thank the Board of Directors specifically. A special shout out to Tom McDaniel. Tom, thank you so much for your oversight on the MAPS 3 projects. Uh, when I was first elected, Roy Williams was also fairly new to his role as the President and CEO of the Chamber. What a remarkable run. Roy's had. You, you may not know it, but probably suspect it, but Roy is known across the country for this chamber's accomplishments. And I've had the good fortune of visiting with mayors and chamber leadership from coast to coast. This is the best chamber of commerce anywhere. Yeah. Mm. We have worked together on almost all of the major projects, uh, bringing the NBA to town, horse shows, MAPS 3, Tinker Air Force Base, education, bond issues, economic development efforts, and then jobs, jobs, jobs. Um, before I let you all get back to work, I felt like I want to provide a little bit of closure to that story from 14 years ago when the nine-year-old girl asked me about the balloons. Well. First of all, she's not getting ready to walk out here in some sort of big reveal. I mean, this, this is not Dr. Phil. I don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know where she is. But as I wrote this speech, I was thinking all of this through. She's now 23 years old, perhaps a recent college graduate. Well, for the record, those balloons were biodegradable. So we met her standards in 2004, but the question it would be, are we still meeting those expectations today? And I hope we are, and I bet we are, because we have all worked so hard to improve the wide world brand of Oklahoma City. We have taken a city that had been branded by tragedy and built it into a cosmopolitan, job-creating economic powerhouse that is also known for its compassion. And uh, speaking personally, it's been the honor of a lifetime to be your mayor. Well, thank you. <laughs>